Hi, I'm Rick Savage, the co-founder of Overnight Angels Crew, our brand new clothing company, and I'm here today to uh, just answer one or two questions that you kindly sent in. Where did you get the idea for the name of the brand? And is there a backstory why the brand was named after an Ian Hunter song? Well, to be honest, uh, Overnight Angels came out, came about from a, a period of time where it was a very pivotal point in, in, in my life. I was 16 years of age for the first 16 years of my life, I really wanted to be a professional footballer and came very, very close. I was on uh, what we call schoolboy forms with Sheffield United. Uh, and at the age of 16, they decided that I wasn't quite going to be good enough uh, to play for them, uh, which was a little bit of a blow. But within, within three or four weeks of that happening, I bumped into Joe Elliott, uh, lead singer with my band Def Leppard, and we basically formed the band there and then. So it was a bit of a sliding doors movement in a, in a sense that from the, the summer of 77, really big time, from changing from being like, uh, wanting to be a footballer to suddenly getting interested in being, being in a band. Uh, there was many songs uh, during that, that era that, you know, that's always stuck in my mind. Uh, I had bands at the time, my favourites were Queen, Thin Lizzy, UFO, Led Zeppelin. Uh, but one song that always stuck with me uh, was this uh, Overnight Angels by Ian Hunter. Uh, and when we came to like looking for a name for the brand that was going to be our clothing brand, it, it just suddenly hit me and I, I suggested it to the guys. It was one of many suggestions, but given what it represents to me in the time of my life, it, it, it still resonated with me, and I just thought it's going to be great for uh, you know for the clothing company that uh, that we were wanting to put together. One question that's uh, also come in uh, is: Has working with Scott made you closer? You must be so proud of the man he has become. Well, I'm really, really proud of him. I'm, I'm proud of all our children, uh, but it's fantastic to have Scott on board. Uh, he works tirelessly. He's got a great eye for, for the clothing. He's, he's basically learning everything about the, the industry. Uh, and I really don't think we, we certainly wouldn't be as good and we certainly wouldn't be the same without him. Uh, I've always liked to think that we've, you know, we've always been close, uh, as, you know, as, as I have and my wife has with all our children. But, it, you know, I could not be prouder of it for being part of this journey and actually being a real driver within this journey. So, yeah, it's, it, it's invaluable. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do it without. Another question that uh, has been sent in. A uh, bit bizarre, but uh, they say to me, uh, what is your favourite tattoo? Uh, I'm not sure whether they mean on me or just in general. Uh, I'll take it that it means my favourite tattoo that I actually have. I don't have too many. I have one on my, my forearm, one on my shoulder, one on my chest. I think that's it for now. That could, that could always change. Uh, I think, oh yes, not forgetting the wife on my, uh, on my right arm. My favourite tattoo, I believe, is, is this one. And it's a poem, it's, it's, it's the first eight lines of a poem written by a guy called John Dunn, uh, and it's entitled The Good Morrow. And it actually appears in the movie Tristan and Isolde. Uh, anybody that's seen that movie, it's a great love story. This is a theme that runs through the actual movie itself. Also to add that my wife Paige has exactly the same tattoo on her. Right. So, I do believe we're the only two people that actually have that. So that would have to be my favourite tattoo. Is the OAC we see today what you originally envisioned 
or has it morphed with Scott's input? That's a very good question, but I've got to say, when you start up a company and when you've got this idea for, uh, especially a clothing company, you have a rough idea and it sort of just works itself as you get into it. Different ideas come in, you get some things that seem a good idea to begin with, kind of move to the wayside because you're getting a feel for things and other things can take, take their place. Uh, Scott's inputs have always been there from the very start and what I think is great about uh, having Scott on board is that while I would obviously lean towards a more elderly, more uh, fashionable stroke, uh, probably higher end sort of clothing, Scott brought this, this urban street cred uh, into the brand which is really the Overnight Angels crew. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's really where we're at. There is, you know, there is another side of the OAC, which I represent a lot more, uh, of which I've worn some of the clothing on stage with Death Leopard. Uh, and so I, I really believe that we're kind of covering a wide demographic of, of ages, from the late teenagers, 20 year olds, right through to uh, more mature people, shall we say. So I think, I think the balance is fantastic of what we're doing here. If you could fill in on bass for one show, for any band, who would it be? That is a good question. Uh, and the, the reason it's a good question is because it's, such, it's so hard to actually answer. Uh, believe it or not, Def Leppard is the only band that I've ever been in. I've never been in, a, in another band. so. The thought is a little, a little strange to actually perform. Uh, it was fantastic uh, playing in the uh, the tribute concert for Taylor Hawkins uh, a while back. That was getting to play with other people, uh, like the guys from Foo Fighters, Miley Cyrus. The whole thing was was just a real great experience. But if I had to choose one band, it would have to be my favorite band of all time. And as much as I've got ultimate respect for John Deacon, and wherever you are, John, whatever you're doing, as Queen fans, we all miss you. But if I could actually just play your parts for one night, I'd be a happy man. Another question that's been uh, sent in is, uh, and I'll read it here. Your stage clothes are always on point. Have you always been interested in fashion? Well, I, I appreciate the comments. Thank you uh, about the, the stage clothes. It's kind of funny, really, when you talk about stage clothes, especially when you've been basically playing on stage for more than 40 years. It changes through the years, through, through the decades. I mean, some of these things we all used to wear back in the 80s were pretty pretty outrageous and a little cringeworthy looking back now. Uh, but having said that, to answer you, the second part of your question, always been interested in fashion, always. Uh, kind of like, like Scott, even at an early age, I was very particular about what I wanted to wear. Uh, and I just had a, you know, a, had a, a vision of, of how I wanted to look, always. You know, a lot of, even some of the guys in the band, you know, would, would kind of wear what they're told to wear for a photo shoot and, and be happy with it, you know. Uh, I've always been a bit more particular. I've always believed in quality. I've always believed in uh, just looking looking comfortable in, in whatever it is that you're wearing. And I think that's the most important thing, you, you know, whether it's fashionable or not, it can still look good if you wear it. As Rod Stewart once said, you wear it well it's going to look cool. Okay, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your questions. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Hopefully we're going to do this again sometime very soon. So keep your questions coming and uh, we'll see you next time.